Y'all, you know, it is Saturday, June 24th. The time is 2010, New York local time. And in this video, I want to talk about Gambler's High, and I want to talk about how it must go. So, when you first start trading, and you get a few couple profitable trades in there, you're going to be excited about the money that you're seeing coming to your account, even if it's fake dollars, even if it's simulated. You're going to get a high off that, and what that is, is that's called Gambler's High. And you're going to chase that feeling, and you're going to want it again. You're going to chase it again. You're going to chase it again, and that's when you're going to lose. What I am here to tell you, and this is very painful for me to say, is that when you are trading these markets, you should feel no sort of elation when the market performs as expected. When you trade algorithmic trading theory, this might be another video that I do, I will see. There is no price move that should surprise you. All price will ever do, this is all it does, and this is all it will ever do, is it seeks inefficiencies and liquidity. It is an eternal dance between inefficiency and liquidity. If price moves up, it's going to find a sell side inefficiency or it's going to look for buy side liquidity. That is it. That is all that it can do, that is all that it will do. Those are the mechanics of these electronically, algorithmically delivered markets. I don't know. Maybe the market was different in the 1920s. I don't care. I'm not Wyckoff. I'm not trading some fucking bullshit from the 1930s. I'm not trading Dow Theory. I'm not trading GAN, Elliott Wave bullshit, Gartley patterns, any of that nonsense. There are only two things that these markets do in our modern day and age. They seek liquidity and they seek inefficiency. And that is all that they can do. That is all that they will do. And so when you are trading and you see a big move turn in your favor, if you feel any amount of elation, if you feel any amount of surprise, you over leveraged. You traded too much. You put on too much size. None of these moves whether it's in gold, silver, E-mini, S&P 500, NASDAQ. I remember I was sitting in a Discord channel in a certain server many weeks ago when the NASDAQ was still uh, pumping up, and, and this, was, this was some time ago, and I heard a gentleman from Sweden talk about how surprised he was that the NASDAQ was doing what it was doing. My friends, none of these moves should surprise you. Nothing, okay? Take a look at gold. Take a look at this move up. Let's go to our regular trading hours. What was it doing? It was seeking inefficiencies in the marketplace. Right here, right here, and right here, and right here. That was all it was doing. Okay? All it was doing. It was seeking inefficiency. Now it's coming back down. Okay? Even if you were looking from the liquidity side of things, look at our Wednesday, June 21st, New York PM high. We ran that. We, we swept it. So whether you were looking at the inefficiencies higher, the regular trading hours gap, or whether you were looking at the liquidity target, it didn't matter. That's what price was doing when it went up there. 30-year bond. 30-year bond, regular trading hours. Let's go to our electronic trading hours. If you saw this move in the 30-year bond and it surprised you, you did something wrong. You missed something. Okay? Let's say you got long here and just by pure happenstance, you watched it run up and you felt some sort of gambler's high. My friend, you did something wrong because we go to our regular trading hours, there it was right here. There was our buy side inefficiency and price was merely going up to reprice into a prior inefficiency. That's it, that's all it was doing, that's all it can do. That's all it can do. Inefficiency and liquidity. That is it, an eternal dance. An eternal dance of inefficiency and liquidity. And gambler's high will cloud your judgment, it will get in the way. You should never be surprised by what price is doing. Never. Australian dollar futures. Australian dollar futures. Okay. Electronic trading hours. This right here, this move down. Okay. I'm going to highlight this in the box. That was an Australian central bank interest rate decision. It might have been earlier, but it was one of these. One of these moves down was an Australian Central Bank um, interest rate decision. 
and all of the smart people out there with their 30,000 Oxford and MIT degrees and their bullshit this and bullshit that, they'll tell you that this move was random. Oh, well, you couldn't predict what the Australian, the, the Australian bank was going to come out and do. No, I cannot. That is true. What I can tell you, though, is that there was liquidity on the Australian dollar, all three of these places. All three of these places, there was liquidity. And I know that price seeks liquidity. I know it does that. Regular trading hours. What do we see here? New York session. There's inefficiently delivered price down here. Regular trading hours gaps. Price will come down during the electronic trading hours on some of these Forex products a lot, merely to come back and re-deliver and start repricing some of these uh, regular trading hours gaps. Okay? So whether you were looking at inefficiency or whether you were looking at these liquidity points, sell side liquidity, either way, you saw this move that it could happen. It was reasonable for price to do that. Okay? Every time that you see a big move and you think, oh, it's a big move. By the way, what do we see here? Sell side inefficiency. Sell side inefficiency. Price was offering these sell side inefficiencies back to the sell side, as we expect that price will do. It's one of the reasons why you have to trade low leverage so that you can allow these moves to play out and they're not surprising you and you feel no amount of gamblers high. Price should never surprise you in what it's doing. Okay, even a surprise, look, the only thing that I think that could truly surprise the markets would be like a surprise rate announcement, terrorist attack. You're probably thinking, oh, Corona. No, I think Corona was planned, but whatever, you don't have to believe that. Um, the, this all, it's all these markets can do. That's all they can do. These retracements here, offering buy side, they were sell side inefficient, so the buy side came back and re-offered it. That's the eternal dance of price, is inefficiency and liquidity. None of these moves should ever surprise you. You should never feel any amount. It has to go. It has to go. Your gambler's high. Any amount of surprise. I can't believe that the market did this. I can't believe that price did this. Whoa, who could have seen that coming? That has to go. Nothing in these markets is random. They are algorithmically delivered. They are 100% controlled to the core. Okay? So you have to let your gambler's high go. You have to let it go. It's time to let it go. It's time to let it go. The only thing that you should ever think really in your head when you see a big move in price, quote unquote a big move, whether it's in whether it's in gold, whether it's in Australian dollar futures, whether it's in NASDAQ. You'll hear people all over the all over the YouTube, all these bullshitters that you're listening to, Brave Forex Academy, all these Forex hustlers. And they'll they'll tell you who oh, well who could have seen this big move coming? Well, I don't know. Doesn't that look like a sell side inefficient price delivery right there? So what was price doing here? It was offering it back to the sell side. Mirror principle. It's no no surprise there. Regular trading hours. Look at that. Regular trading hours gaps. You see that we had sell side inefficient, so during electronic trading hours it came back, redelivered it. Is that is that shocking to you? Is that shocking to you? Shouldn't be. It's exactly what we expect price to do. Doesn't mean that you're going to interpret what price is doing at all times correctly. That's why you have to have a trading model. But what I'm trying to say is that this is not a slot machine. This is not a slot machine. This is not a random number generator. That's not what's happening in these markets. These markets are 100% algorithmically delivered. They're delivered by algorithms. They're delivered by mathematics. That that is what the price is doing. It's already baked into the cards. Your only task is to find a model that can reasonably predict what the price is going to do in the short term. That is it. That is all you have to do. You pick a model. You pick a model. I know what my model is, where you have the math in your favor, under leverage, and price should perform as expected. You should feel no amount of gambler's high. You should feel no amount of elation. You should feel only that you are content that price performed as expected. That is it. That is all you should feel. There should be no other emotion. And if you feel any amount of high happiness, elation, you over leveraged. And I'm talking about when you're taking winning trades. 
That is what you should feel, that price performed as expected. Every time that price moves, performed as expected. You just think to yourself, ad nauseum, well, price behaved as expected. Price behaved as expected. That's it. That's all it did. Okay? You catch a big pick, pip move here on gold, price behaved as expected. Do we expect that gold is going to want to come in and reprice overnight to these regular trading hours gaps and efficiencies? It does that regularly. We expect that to happen. Okay? Was it a surprise that gold moved up 3% in a day because it was filling in? It was re-delivering and then rebalancing an inefficient price delivery relative to New York local time, relative to these regular trading hours gaps? Is it a surprise? Is it a surprise that price came back down here and re-delivered and then rebalanced this regular trading hours gap that we formed on Tuesday? And then on Friday, we came all the way back down to re-deliver and rebalance it. Is that a surprise to you? It shouldn't be. So you have to ignore the numbers on the screen here, folks, and think, oh, who could have been in? If only I could have been in on that big move. The only way that you're going to get there is if you under leverage so that you're allowing your trades to work for the full duration, you under leverage, and then you only think to yourself price performed as expected. That's it. That's all that price can do, inefficiency and liquidity. It's an eternal dance. And for the remainder of time, as long as they allow you to trade these markets, as long as they are delivered by algorithms, and over time, they're going to be 100% delivered by algorithms. They already are. But what I'm trying to say is that I, I think the events of human intervention will just come to an absolute minimum. If it's not a terrorist attack, if it's not anthrax, if it's not smallpox, guys, if it's, if it's not WAR, and even then, do I think sometimes that they'll generate a virus in order to go back in the markets and, and seek some sort of inefficiency. Yeah, I do think that they'll do that, but that's I'm a conspiracy theorist. I'm a tinfoil hat wearer. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you, though, is that on an intraday basis, it's all delivered by algorithms, folks. It's, it's, all, it's all baked into the cards. Your only task is, is to interpret it, to study inefficiency and liquidity. Inefficiency and liquidity. That is all price can do. It is all price will do. And so none of these moves should surprise you. You should never feel any amount of gambler's high. If you do feel any amount of gambler's high, as I've said before, if you do feel any amount of gambler's high, you over leveraged and you're not ready for that size of a position because frankly, you should feel nothing other than price behaved as expected. Maybe a small amount, amount of, a small amount of contentness, um, a feeling of, of, gratitude that you've learned these concepts, a feeling of contentness that you you feel like you're you know you're studying and you're learning what actually drives these electronic markets. That's all you should feel. Price behaved as expected. Price perform as expected. I anticipated that. Okay? That's it. That's it. Shouldn't be a surprise to you when the markets are moving. So that is all. That is all folks. That's all I have for you right now. Um, I wish you the best. It's been a journey for me to let go of Gambler's High and to know that I don't want to feel it anymore. I don't want to feel any amount of elation when I'm making money. It's the only way that I'm going to be comfortable with bigger positions in the future. can't feel any amount of, of anxiety, of nervousness in your position. And if you do, you've over-leveraged. You can't feel any amount of, of surprise. If you do, you've over-leveraged. If you feel any amount of high, elation, a dopamine hit, serotonin hit, You've over leveraged. The only feeling that you should have is price performed as expected. And if you have anything other than that, you over leveraged. Okay. One last thing I want to mention is that if you will get there, you have to have faith. For me, it's faith in the Lord, faith in God. Most of you are males between the age of 25 and 34 you're probably European or Canadian so you think that the idea of God is foolish that's fine I'm, I, this is not a channel for me to preach at you have faith in the mathematics if you don't believe in God have faith in the mathematics have faith that if you follow a model that is profitable and you keep your risk of ruin that means if you keep your risk very small. So your risk of, of actually blowing out your account, whether it's a simulated account, prop firm account, or it's your own cash, and you should be treating your simulated accounts like cash accounts. I promise you, you should. You paid for them. You should treat them as 
You should treat your prop firm accounts, whether they're your evaluation account or you're funded, you should be treating them just as you would your cash account. If you keep your risk of ruin, meaning you don't blow out your account, you never even come close to blowing out your account. You treat your prop firm accounts like you would your own cash and you follow a profitable model that shows returns over time, you will get there. And you don't have to have faith in God like I do to get there, just believe in the math. Believe in the mathematics that you will get there. It's going to be slow. It's going to be a grind. It's going to be a journey. One of the things that you need to get rid of if you're going to get there to the destination, if you're going to reach the promised land, you have to have patience. You have to have patience. The Bible says that he who does not search will not find. And there's wisdom in that. Many of you are too... You're too worldly, or what should I say? You're too academic. You, you don't realize there's a reason why religious traditions have been around for thousands of years. It's, it's because it works. It's because there's wisdom there. Otherwise, those concepts would have just died out. And no matter what you're looking at, any, any, any religion would tell you the same thing. The wisdom is there. He, he who does not search will not find. He who does not search will not find. If you do not search for excellence in your trading, you won't find it. It's not going to find you. If you don't search for patience, it's not going to find you. If you don't search for a model, the model's not just going to find you. You must search in order to find. You must reap what you sow, and you first must sow. And it's going to be small. At first, it's going to be slow. It's going to be a lot of mistakes made. You're not going to interpret what these algorithms are doing at all times correctly. You're not going to understand uh, all of your inefficiencies, even though I have a video up on my channel on the inefficiencies. Go watch it. You're going to get overconfident. Your ego is going to be too big. You're going to over leverage. You're going to feel gambler's high. You're not even going to recognize that it is gambler's high when you're feeling it. You're going to feel like, you know, you're, you're a smart guy. What What is a... Uh, you know, I can outsmart these markets. What I'm trying to tell you, you have to search for excellence, my friends, in order to find it. You have to search for patience in order to find it. You have to search for discipline in order to find it. You have to search for a profitable model in order to find it. These prop firms, Trade Day, Apex Trader Funding, top step, earn to trade. There's many of them. Earn, earn to trade, yeah. They're going to make you think it's a casino because they're low. Most of you can afford a few hundred dollars here and there. Most of you. Some of them are even cheaper than that. They're going to make you think it's a slot machine. And they're designed to do that. Doesn't mean that I think their business model is, I don't think their business model is immoral. I think it's amoral. You have an opportunity. They give you an opportunity. As long as they pay out, they actually pay out. I think that's all they're contractually bound to do. But you have to know there's a reason why only 22% of people who try top step pass. So they think, oh, I, I got 300 bucks. I'll just, I'm, I, I don't really care if I lose this. My friends, if you ever want to get there, you have to treat your prop firm accounts, your evaluation accounts as your real cash. Don't think of it as fake cash. Don't think of it as, oh, I only spent 300 bucks on this. I only spent 50 bucks on this. I can afford to lose it. Don't think like that. Treat it as your real cash. Treat it with the same respect you would your own money that you worked for. That's the only way that you're going to under leverage. They're going to allow you 15 contracts, 35 contracts, trade one, trade two. That's my advice to you. So, he who does not search will not find, my friends. He who does not search will not find. That is all, my friends. Your gambler's high must go. My gambler's high must go. My search, my search for gambler's high, I know it has to go. It has to leave. I have to expel it, exercise it from, from my conscious, from my soul. The search for gambler's high, it's got to go. If you want to go find Gambler's High, go to an actual casino. Take a thousand bucks, take take one K, two K, put 
put your credit card out in your car, leave it, leave it at home. Take a take a thousand bucks cash. Go go with one k. Go go to an actual casino. If you want to find gamblers high, go to an actual casino. But when you come to the marketplace, this is not a slot machine. So stop treating it like one. That's all I have for you. My affiliate links are in the description box below. Uh, I highly recommend the tr uh, Trading View uh, Pro Plan. My affiliate box, I think it gives you $15 uh, if you sign up using my affiliate link. Um, I highly recommend a Pro Plan on Trading View. Uh, I'm not paid to say that. I love Trading View. Looks great. Charts are, I think, the best charts in the industry. Um, and that is all. Bye bye.